last year as a freshman red shirt walk on meaning first year in college basketball, not an athletic scholarship, and I've never checked into a collegiate basketball game, I still made five figures in NIL. Right? Like the, so I know this strategy works, and I'm giving it away for free, even though I've spent hundreds of hours perfecting it. Beyond the Ball Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and as you all know, that the focus and the premise of this show is to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And today I'm, I'm excited to have our guests. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to go ahead straight into the intro, man. I'm going to go into the intro because I don't want to take nothing away uh, from you. But man, to, so today we have here, we have, we have Jackson Prince. He's an aspiring motivational speaker with an emphasis in social media marketing. He was valedictorian in his senior class at Duncanville High School, where he won two UIL state championships. Not one but two. Uh, and he's an advocate for mental health for the Mental Health Coalition and a board ambassador for Fund of Youth Sports. And lastly, the host of the Sideline Show podcast. Man, without further ado, welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. Jackson. I'm gonna call you Prince. You know, yeah, you sounds Prince. good, man. No, I pre appreciate, appreciate you having me on, man. Uh, I've been actually trying to get onto more podcasts, um, you know, other people's stuff, because you know, I have a ton of fun making mine, but you know, I'm, it's all about the audience, man. And uh, so, no, nah, I appreciate you having me on. For sure, man. Gl glad to have you here, man. Shout out to Coach, uh, Co Coach Johnson, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out to him, man. That's it's my guy. Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get into it. So, man, let us let's talk about high school a little bit. So, you you won two championships, and potentially could have won a third, right? But due to COVID, the tournament was canceled. So, talk a little bit about. Uh, your high school career and how it molded you for college basketball and academics. For sure. Well, coming into high school, um, I mean, I was a, I was a hooper, right? And and everyone going into high school thinks that they're going to go play at Duke or they're going to go play at Kentucky or one of these big blue blood schools. Um, what I quickly realized was that while I'd always been a winner, I didn't know what it really took to win. And, and so I would say that's the the biggest piece that I learned throughout high school was what it actually meant to become a champion, both in the classroom and on the court, right? And then just in, in the community, right? Because I'm, I'm at Dungaville High School, I have to represent the community that I play for. I got to represent my coaches and my teammates as well. Um, and everyone who knows me knows that I could not have been at any other school and loved it the same way. I mean, I, I love Dunkerville High School through and through. I've been a Panther since I was in fifth grade, um, and I'll be a Panther till the day I die. So, yeah, no, I mean, learning learning how to win, learning under Coach Peavy, um, and then developing my game, right? So I came in as a, as a hooper, but I wasn't a basketball player. What I, what I ended up realizing was, you know, we ran our high school program like a college program, and Coach Peavy was very adamant about saying, we're going to let you play here the way you'll play in college. And at first that was a hard hit for me because it went from me coming off of ball screens and having the ball in my hand most of the time to I got to learn how to sprint to the corner and, and I got to learn how to get myself open for shots and let other guys do the things I, I would like to do. Basically playing towards your strengths, right? So a lot of people see it as, oh, well, coach is putting me in a box and he's not letting me do this. He's not letting me do that. I saw it as this is what I got to do to get on the court especially, you know, my freshman year, I'm playing behind Micah Peavy. I'm not going to take, take away minutes from Micah Peavy. You know, my sophomore year, I'm playing behind Juan Reyna, Zerk Phelps, Damon Nicholas, all Division One guys. I'm not going to take minutes from them. Right, junior year, I'm playing behind Anthony Black and, and Ron Holland and Ashton Hardaway. How am I, like, what can I do to take away minutes from those guys? So for me, that was being the best locker room guy, one. I, I think all definitely three out of my four years, possibly all four years, my teammates will say I was the best locker room guy. Being the best vocal leader and leading by example. Um, it didn't matter who you were in practice. You know, me and Ron got into it a lot because, you know, Ron could be stubborn at times, but I'm the guy who's going to say something to him because I want to win more than anything and I don't care about anyone's personal feelings. Right. Well, especially when it comes to winning. Um, you know, and, and stretching the court, knocking down shots, playing defense. Right. The basketball side of things. So, you know, learning how to, to become a key role guy and allowing us to win championships that way by taking my pride and my selfish, you know, my selfishness and moving those things to the side. I'd say that's probably the biggest thing that I learned. I like that. OK, so you're talking about how the, the way the program was set up, how 
Uh, Coach PV put you on a position to where you were you were out of high school, but you were really running everything like college. So let, let's let's talk a little bit about college. So with you being with you being a freshman red shirt walk on, mm -hmm. right? How did you find the drive to perform around other top tier talent day after day after day? Man, and again, it goes back to high school, right? Because I played with McDonald's All Americans and other guys who were you know Mr. Texas Basketball was Zerk Phelps, right? My my sophomore year, so I'd always played around you know key guys, guys who are going to be fours, five stars and, and NBA guys, right? Lottery picks. So playing at Texas, I mean, that wasn't new to me, right? And, and I'm going in there, you know, Dylan Mitchell was an All-American. Tyrese Hunter won Big 12 Freshman of the Year when he was a freshman. Like Max A. Smith was, you know, at the time coming in my first day, he was like 13th on the all-time scoring list. So for me, it's, you know, they're people, right? And, and for me, I understood, okay, I'm not going in there to play day one. I knew that. Everyone else knew that. It wasn't a secret, right? And at the college level, it's not never really a secret what your role is on the team. So my goals were always the same. I'm going to raise the team GPA. I'm going to be the best locker room guy on the team. I'm going to find a way to connect with everyone on a heartfelt level. So that way everyone feels like they can come to me when they need to. And, you know, I still talk to Max and Dylan DeSue and Tyrese and, and DM and everything. Um, you know, even after, you know, we've all gone our separate ways, but I mean, that was just kind of the thing is find, find your niche, find your role on that team. And, and I felt like I did that pretty quickly. I got that. I got that. So, okay. Uh, Jackson, I want, I want you to talk to me about this. How, how does it feel knowing that you could have been cut at any moment, knowing that like the other teammates on full scholarships, but you feeling that pressure and feeling that weight? Talk about that. Yeah, no, absolutely a lot of pressure. I mean, my position is a very replaceable one. Um, now, to be completely honest with you, there were a lot of days where I was frustrated. Like, I wanted to be on the court, and I wanted to play, and I wanted to get the recognition that some of the other guys were getting. Um, you know, and, it, and it's tough, right, because coming from high school where, you know, as far as Duncanville, like, I was one of those guys who got a lot of that. Going into college, I mean, it was a really humbling experience, for sure. Um, but I already knew what it was going in. Also, my mentality was I personally know 500 to 1,000 people – who would murder me in my sleep to be in my position. So knowing, and, and like, I'm a Christian, man. Like, I, I fully believe that God has a plan for me. So me being in that position was by design, right? So, you know, I just woke up every day, and no matter how frustrated I may have been, I was just thankful for that opportunity. And, and I mean, that was my attitude every day. I wasn't really, I'm not one to dwell on anything negative that could happen or, you know, I'm not, I'm not a what if guy. I'm a guy who always looks at the bright side and, you know, if ever if anything goes south, I'll deal with it then. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coaches, admins, athlete development. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm Jonathan Jones and I just want to come to you and let you know I see the work you've been doing. I see that you've been investing in your athletes so much time, effort, energy, and dollars. I know it costs money to develop your student athletes, but I want to partner with you and help you take this program to the next level. What does that look like? Well, I'm Jonathan Jones, and I've partnered with colleges from California all the way up to Rhode Island, right? Partnering with them, working with them around leadership development, around media training, and providing them tangible, tactical skills that they can implement to help them successfully transition from college to post-graduation, okay? So if you're tired, you're exhausted, and you're drained, and you're like, who is somebody that I can bring in to speak to my student athletes that has the experience of being a former collegiate athlete right who's won a national championship that's me and i want to partner with you so all you have to do is just click the link just down below and then we can hop on a call so that way we can talk through what are your challenges where are you trying to grow and how we can come together to where we both can see your student athletes succeed beyond their degree i'm jonathan jones and i'm your next speaker so knowing that during this time at the university of texas Kevin Durant, LaMarcus Aldridge, Tristan Thompson, P.J. Tucker, Damian James, all these greats came before you. How was the UT Longhorn basketball experience for you? Describe, describe that environment. Oh, man. I mean, it was phenomenal, right? I mean, in the summer, we had DJ Augustine and KD come and work out with us. And it was actually really funny because I was, um, you know, we've got those like Norma Tech compression boots or whatever. And we had these like massage like <coughs> lounge chairs. So it was middle of summer. We had just finished a workout and I'm sitting in the Norman Tech boots and I'm asleep. And 
I, you know, I feel someone come and like slap me on the chest. So I'm, I wake up and I'm like, I'm like, man, like, who is that? Yada. And I wake up and I'm staring KD right in the face. And he, and he dabs me up and he was like, yo, what's up, young bull? And, I, and I'm just like, I'm half asleep. And I'm just like, man, like, that was cool. Like, that's just a cool experience, you know? So, I mean, obviously, the University of Texas is in an amazing place. Austin is an amazing city. Um, and the, the fans are some of the best fans ever. I mean, we got to travel to a lot of different places. And I mean, them, them, them Longhorn fans are the rowdiest bunch for sure. So, no, I mean, I, I loved, loved the University of Texas, man. I, I, I had a, an amazing year playing there. Um, yeah, man, I, it was just really a blessing, man. It's really a blessing. For sure. Yeah, long, long her nation, for sure. And, yeah. And now in the SEC, they're... It's, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, uh, you know, with, with, with you having such a great experience, why did you enter yourself in the transfer portal? Well, there was a lot of aspects to it. I would say the main aspect was, you know, I was recruited by Chris Beard and, you know, his whole situation happened and I still decided to go to the University of Texas um, thinking that things would be, you know, about the same. Right. And it, and it's tough for any, any player, any player who's dealt with a coaching change understands that, you know, y- you're kind of putting yourself out in the wind and you don't exactly know what it's going to end up being like. Um, so, you know, there, there was, there were some issues on that end and, um, uh, you know, so some other factors that, you know, I'm not at liberty to talk about on camera, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was an amazing experience. The, the coaches were, um, you know, the coaches were awesome and letting me, you know, have my experience there and everything. Um, but I decided to enter the transfer portal just cause, you know, I felt like I said, I'm very prayerful. You know, I'm a Christian. I listen to what God is telling me to do. And it just felt like he was telling me it was time to, time to move on from being a long one. So that's why I chose to enter the portal. You gotta move where the spirit leads, man. Always. You gotta move where the spirit leads. Are you still currently in the portal? Currently, yes. Yeah. There's a. You know, we, we can actually get into it, and I'm down to down to talk about some options and stuff. But um, I think you'll I think you'll be surprised about where I'm at with it. Uh, okay. 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 Do you still have an interest in playing college basketball? Um, if the right situation came along, absolutely. No, I mean, you know, and and I've been been blessed to have some conversations with some really important coaches. Um, and, and I was very aggressive about, you know, outreach, you know, I mean, I was, you know, been on a couple hundred phone calls myself, had coach PV helping me out and, and, you know, we were really working the game, right? I mean, that's what you got to do. So, um, you know, and, and there was some stuff that fell through and, um, you know, I was kind of praying for God to close all the doors that needed to be closed and only leave one door open, right? That that's always been my prayer, um. Now, granted, I've been frustrated with that because it's a, it's a frustrating prayer, especially when you get told no a lot, right? Um, but what I decided to do is kind of make a game out of it and see, okay, how many no's can I get until I get that yes? And once I changed my perception on that, it made the transfer portal process a lot more enjoyable. Um, and now what I'm seeing is that, you know, maybe what God is telling me to do is go into the content full time. Right. And, and, and lean into that because this is really what I love doing. Like I've always said the podcast is my favorite form of content, you know, diving into that piece of it with the things that I've experienced and, and the network that I currently have. I mean, I, I don't see why it couldn't couldn't be everything I dream of it to be, you know, for sure. What, what was the original uh, idea for the podcast? Like what what started the idea to, I need to do this. I need to go ahead and put out this show. I need to put out this content in this way. Where did that Where did that begin from? Man, I'd say junior year. Um, Brittany Graham, she was our social media woman at, at Duncanville, and she always told me, Jack, you're really good on camera. I said, Brett, I don't know what to tell you. Just, you know, I've always, I've always enjoyed it. I love speaking. That's what I want to do as a career. Um, you know, and, and she kind of told me, hey, you know, people are starting to call you a fan favorite, and maybe you should kind of lean into this and build your brand some more. At the time, I didn't have social media. I had no social media. Really, I didn't, I wasn't even on, on my phone a whole lot. I barely had people's phone numbers. People knew me, but I didn't know anyone, right? My whole thing was basketball. How can I get to the division one level now, right? And, and you know, as a high school kid, you're caught up in rankings and you're caught up in all this other stuff that objectively does not matter, right? So that that's where I was. So... That night, after we had that conversation, I downloaded Instagram, 
Um, I remember I was psyched because I had 120 followers by the next day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it was cool, man. And I, I started to build a brand on there, started posting stuff and trying to make myself a little more present. And I always knew that if I had social media, well, then I was going to use it like I was an influencer from day one. So my whole thing was, you know, my whole thing is being omnipresent, being everywhere all at once in front of everyone's eyes. My goal is for 6 billion people on planet Earth to know my name. You know, and, and is that a lofty goal? Absolutely. I don't see why it's not attainable, right? You know, I look at guys like John Travolta. Why can't I be John Travolta, right? So, you know, I, 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 I study and I studied the social media game. Um, and going into college, or actually my senior year of high school, I was really into the business and like finance side of things because I had been studying it a lot. I mean, I've put in thousands of hours studying business and, and media and all those things. So, I, uh, I actually went to the media teacher um, at Duncanville and I said, hey, man, you know, me and him are really, have a really good relationship. Uh, his son plays with my younger brother. So me and him have a really good relationship. And I told him, hey, man, this is what I'm trying to do. I need a team of three to six people who can help me carry this out. I know you guys just won state for, uh, you know, for corporate media. Give me your best guys. And he was like, yeah, man, I mean, they need the projects anyways. This guy, this guy, this guy. And I had it in the next 48 hours, I had a strong team of four people. I had a guy to direct. I had a camera technicians guy. I had a graphics guy and I had an editing guy. And this is at, while you're at Duncanville. This is at Duncanville. Yeah, this is at Duncanville. And what we ended up doing was we produced, um, you know, a YouTube kind of series that I was calling Speaking Success. And... You know, I, I, it was just a one man show. Like it was just me and, and my team. But as far as being in front of the camera, it was just me. And I would talk about some things that I experienced and talk about some motivational stuff. And really what I saw that was is reps, right? Because getting into the, I mean, you know, man, like you're, you're in front of the camera a lot. So it's reps. So yeah. And, and we actually ended up starting a little bit of a business where we were helping other people do that. You know, we were going to businesses in the area and helping them produce content. Um, had a couple contracts under our belt. I wish I would have started it a lot earlier because I feel like it could have taken off. Um, but, you know, I went to college and we kept trying to keep it going. But with everything I had going on, um, I wasn't able to work. You know, I hadn't gotten to the point where I was able to work on the business. I had to work in the business still because I'm the one picking up the phone and calling. Like I was dialing 50 to 100 phone numbers a day. So, you know, I, uh, I ended up, you know, telling the team, hey, like, I got to separate myself from this because I'm really focused on basketball. I'm focused on NIL, right? Which I felt like was the next industry I was supposed to go into. So I took all of that as the learning experience and I transitioned it to what I'm currently doing. Back to the podcast, I had already had some experience with it. And I call up Britt and she's like, yeah, you need to, you need to do it because like you're a walk on. You have to find a way to make yourself different than everyone else. So I was like, all right, Britt, I guess I'm going to do this. And I started brainstorming names, came up with the sideline show. Um, reason for that is because I'm on the sideline. I'm, I'm watching the game. I, have the, I always said I have the best seat in the house. So and, and me being around athletes my whole life, there's so much more than just athletes. I mean, they're incredible people. And I wanted to kind of display that. So, yeah, I mean, I bring on, bring on other collegiate athletes. I bring on people who work in... NIL, personal branding, college athletics, that's kind of the niche. And, um, you know, one thing I make sure to talk about in every episode is either talking about content specifically, if they are a content creator, or talk about how, you know, how they've developed their personal brands. So, yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's, it's done really well. I've recorded 15 episodes. I think I've released 13 now. First episode was posted new, just after New Year's Day. So, yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a couple months in, but, uh, you know, I'm about six months in. Man, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I've been, you know, f following the journey, and man, I've been seeing like not even just uh, the the, the sideline show, but even just seeing you on Instagram. And Jack, you've been killing on Instagram, man. Been doing well, man. I'm very, very blessed. Yeah, man. Because I've seen you go from because I think when we first got connected, I think you're at like 19k. Mm -hmm. Now you're at 62k, and I feel like it's been like less than six months. How how how'd you do it, Jack? How'd you do it? Well, being authentic, just being me. And, and, and I say this, and I really mean this, like 
if you follow me and you don't like who I am as a person or you don't like my personality, you can unfollow me. I won't get my feelings hurt. But the people who follow me, like, tr like trust me, one to, to 10,000 people who unfollow me today, ego will be bruised a little bit, but I'll be okay. Like, either you love me or you hate me. Like, there's no in-between with me. And, and that's how I've been my whole life. Um, so I guess just being as authentic as I possibly can and getting better with content as I've gone along um, and really trying to make every person feel like they're valued. You know, if a high school athlete DMs me, I do the best I can to respond as quickly as possible. Because for me, like, I'm not building a platform just for myself. Like, I'm building a platform to help others and to glorify him. Like, that's why I'm doing it. So I think it, I, as long as my intentions are in the right spot, I think it'll just naturally happen. And a lot of, a lot of content creators try to force it, um, you know, and, and they keep beating a dead horse. Like, if something doesn't work, don't keep doing it. That's the definition of insanity. You know, so for me, it was like I'd post a video and it'd get 110 likes. Oh, all right. Well, I can't post that. I shouldn't post that anymore. Like, you know, you, you got to in the early days, you got to go with what works and you just got to keep doing that. So for me, it was like the day in the life videos. And I mean, those things blew up. And then recently it has been the podcast clips. And what I was doing before was I was using AI to like go in and make all the clips for me. And the clips were good, but it didn't have that feel to it and, and, and it didn't really send home the messages that I wanted to send home. So now as opposed to making 20 clips an episode, I make five an episode and I really like, I'm, I meticulously edit them how I want them to look. And I have the same branding for all the clips and you know, those have performed a lot better. I recently have one on Instagram that hit like 3.4 million views. Yeah. In the last week. So, um, and you know, across Instagram and TikTok, it's like 4.5 mil somewhere in there. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's starting to work and you know, I couldn't be more, more thankful for that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen, I've seen the content you talk about and I've seen, seen and also now as I'm hearing you talk about it, like how you spent time and studied and you've taken time with media and, and you got with the, uh, I'm going to say, I was going to say professor at Duncanville, yeah. right. About media. Like you have been putting a strategy behind it because oh, yeah. even the topics that you cover and then even because uh, I, I know you're talking about the tournament mm -hmm. and then you're and I'm not gonna say it's controversial, but it was disruptive yeah. in the sense of people like, you know, some people might agree with it. Some people might not. But either way, people have an opinion about it right. and evokes a feeling. Right. And then they're like. And then they respond. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm the guy who's going to say what everyone is thinking, but no one you know, excuse me, but no one has the balls to say that that's all, you know, uh, who was it? Tim Grover, um, Michael Jordan's strength coach. You know, I, I've read his book relentless and in there, there's a concept of a, of a WTF guy in every organization. There has to be a WTF guy. Otherwise your organization is going to fall apart. Well, that's me. I'm the WTF guy. So if I see something that I don't like and that I know a lot of people don't like, like recently, Rod Wave Elite, right? And I get a, a you know, I, so I make a video about it, right? And, and it's not to, not to be rude or disrespectful or, or vengeful or anything like that. I'm not trying to be any of those things. Just want to, you know, give my honest opinion on it. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poke the bear. I'm going to make some people upset. I would say 60% of people who see my stuff love it. And I'd say 40% wish that I would shut up and delete social media and never post again. I think that's a healthy balance though, right? Because either you hate me or you love me. And actually my favorite comments are the ones that are directed at me saying, oh, well, you're, you know, you're a walk on, you, you're not important, you're lame, whatever. I love those comments because then my people, the people who are in my corner go and attack that person and like really just get them in the comments. Like, no, this guy is legit. Like he's D1 and like done all this stuff. And it's like, I have a group of people who really stand behind me. And I mean, it's, it, and now that group of people is growing for me. It's not about having followers or having fans. It's like having raging supportive fan bases. Like that's what I really want is having people who will stand behind me no matter what I say, you know? 
What's going on, ballers? I'm Jonathan Jones. And I want to tell you a little bit about the platform that we've created just for you. So if you're a current student athlete, if you a recently graduated student athlete, or maybe you're going through that transition, trying to figure out what's next, this is the platform just for you. And what we talk about is we interview industry leading experts. We interview coaches and athletes having them share stories, having them share triumphs, having them even give you tangible skills and also things that you can use right now and today. We release audio episodes every single Wednesday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, okay? So make sure to set your reminders, make sure to put it on your calendar, and you can find us on Apple, on Spotify, on all the major podcast hosting providers, all right? So you just wanna search Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones because this is the platform platform where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And if you want to connect with me personally, you can just put that at Jonathan Jones Speaks on Instagram. Take care, ballers, and I'll see you on the next episode. So you, you were talking about like you enjoy having the, the, the people who are coming to advocate for you. So what I, what I really hear you saying is what, what you've been focused on growing is really been around your content creation. It's really led to you cultivating a community, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Okay. So we, we talked about you killing on, on, on Instagram. Uh, but now I, I want to go back to the podcast. I want to go back to the podcast. So you, cause I, I heard you mention on the sideline show that there's two different routes for college basketball players. You said that there's the route of showcase basketball players. Uh, and then you also talked about the traditional route. Can you break down, uh, what is a showcase basketball player? For sure. So I'm good friends with a couple guys down in Austin who, you know, they've played some pro basketball, but they specialize in kind of the YouTube side of things. If you want to think a guy like Tristan Jazz, right? They, they had that NBA Summer League, um, the Creator Cup thing or whatever, where all the athlete creators or like J-Dub or like Carson Roney. These are like the showcase basketball players who are YouTube people, they're social media people, good basketball players, not taking anything away from their game, but they're not going to get signed to pro contracts right that route i think is becoming increasingly more prevalent and i think it's becoming a lot more fun and, and and it's it's a lot more advertised than it used to be so for a guy like me who's not going to go play in the nba i think that's a great route if someone is looking to stay in basketball obviously like i'm not taught you know when i say there's two routes there's obviously a third which is using basketball to get to a career Right. And, and career can mean a lot of different things. You know, when I say those are the two routes, those are for the people who want to stay in basketball. So the traditional route is you're going to go to a high school where that fits your play style, where you can grow and develop and, and go hoop. You're going to play for an AAU team that's going to get you a lot of exposure and you're going to get good coaching. After that, hopefully you can go to college, go to college for four or five years, do your thing. Hopefully you can go to the league or go pro overseas. And I get a lot of I get a lot of crap about this because someone was like, oh, well, what if I just want to play overseas basketball? Look, if you're over, I know overseas basketball players. I have a friend, Cam Hunt. Guy averages like 27 points in, in a year in a Euro League. Was like Euro League MV, uh, was one of like his league MVP or something. If you got a call from the league, you don't think he'd go? Okay. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make here is if you go overseas, you're still trying to go to the NBA. Yes, traveling is awesome. Going overseas is great. If the Milwaukee Bucks call you, you're going to be in Milwaukee by that Friday. So, like, like that's the same, you know? That's, that's the traditional route. That's every kid's dream is to go play in the NBA finals and win a championship and hit the game-winning shot to win a championship. Right? That's the situation we play out in our driveways. The other guys me, especially in recent years, is like, okay, YouTube makes a lot of money. You know, YouTube pays people lots and lots of money to do that. There's people who do this for full-time careers. And I've always been the guy where it's like, I see, I see someone doing it. And, you know, the Duke Dennis's of the world, you know, I, I look at this guy and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm smarter than him. Right. Not probably not as charismatic, maybe not as fluent as he is, but he's got a lot more experience than me. I look at guys like that and I'm like, why can't I do that? You know, what's stopping me from doing that? And I look at, 
you know, I look at T Jazz, you know, as a basketball player, I'm better than him for sure. Like if we played ones, he'd get this business, but like he ha- he's, he has layup package. Yeah, I mean, that's why he got famous, because he's got the craziest layup package anyone has ever seen. So, you know, why can't I do something like that, right? And and that's always been my thing. And I think that route, the content creation route around basketball, you know, the professor kind of started it. So, you know, and it's becoming increasingly more popular. And I'm, you know, that's, that's my thought on it is why can't that be another career route that you go with this thing? For sure. Yeah. And I know you said you had some you had some calls with some important coaches. Honestly, do you feel your social media presence is a turnoff for some of the coaches and, you know, potential schools that you could sign to? Yeah. So being completely open and honest, it was a turnoff for my coaches at Texas, which I didn't know until the end, um, my end of your meeting. They, they pulled me in and they said, hey, man, like, you know, being completely honest with you, we don't we don't really like what you're doing. I was like, oh, well, y'all never said anything. You know, I would have stopped. Like, respectfully, I would have stopped if y'all asked me to. I mean, this is what I want to do. But, you know, I think, to be completely honest with you, I think most coaches love it. Especially, like, had had a conversation with Penny Hardaway. Loves it. You know, um, Coach Lanier at Rice, he was at SMU. They were recruiting me at SMU before I went to Texas. I talked to him about it. He's a huge proponent of it. Look, if you, if, 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 a college, I think that if a college coach really cares about the kids, they want the kids to get as much out of it as they possibly can. Especially a cat who's like me, who's a walk-on, who's, I'm not playing 30 minutes a game. So what can I do to like squeeze the juice out of this? You only get four, maybe five years. You only get that. And that's if you're lucky. Mind you, like I'm looking at the possibility of not playing anymore like, that's real. You only get four or five years if you're lucky, so why not squeeze the juice out of it while you can't? And I think most coaches are on board with that idea. Obviously, there's a lot of coaches who are really old school about it, and, and you know, the social media stuff and the NIL space is not all that important to them, and that's totally fine. I respect what coaches have to say about the issue and stuff. Um, for any player who wants to look into doing the content creation thing, Hindsight's twenty twenty. I would suggest asking your coaches first mm. and, and just making sure that this is something that's cool with them because you don't want to screw up the opportunity that you have, right? And mind you, like, that's not really the reason why I'm transferring, but it was definitely a factor, right? Now, it's like, I got to live and die by it now. I mean, it's, I'm, you know, I'm kind of at the point of no return with this whole thing. So, you know, um, and, and I'm blessed for that. Honestly, I, I truly am. Um, yeah, man, I think, I think if, if you're open and honest about it, and I think if coaches truly care about every player on their roster, um, you know, I don't, I don't really see why it would be an issue. So for the coaches that, that are on board, right, the, the, the guys or young ladies, you know, they, they check with the coach. The coach is like, yeah, do your thing. Do your content thing, you know, day in the life content. Do your thing. Uh, what, what, what would be some tips that, that, that you would give to, to those athletes who aren't as experienced in content creation as you? Like, what would you tell them to get started? Um, well, your first 50 videos are going to suck. That's the, that's the first thing I would say. Do not expect to, to have as many followers as me if you're going to post 15 videos. Like, I've posted, I've posted and deleted, I don't know, 150 videos. And I, right now I have like 115 active posts. But, and I have even more on the real side of things because some things I don't post to the main grid. But... I mean, it's going to take years. Like if you're not going to be consistent for, I'd say at least a full year, like if you're not, it's, you know, and if you want to grow on this thing, three reels a week. And I talked to, um, you know, I've, I've been looking at doing some deals with meta. So I've been on a lot of phone calls with them and this is really cool experience. They, they got on a meeting with me and they were like, yeah, man, you know, we, we pulled your analytics, uh, Let's go through and talk about every single metric that we possibly measure, how good you're doing, where you're not doing so good, and how you can get better. And they told me, hey, you, on average, you post two reels a week. You've been doing that for the last 18 months. It's like 18 months. Okay, cool. That's the number, two, week, two reels a week for 18 months. They said, yeah, you should do three reels a week and a carousel. So that's four posts a week. 
immediately, when I first got to Texas, I was posting five times a week. And my teammates were like, Jackson, for the love of God, stop posting. Like you post way too much. And I was like, no, I'm going to keep doing this. <laughs> and uh, cause they didn't, they didn't get it right. They didn't get it until they saw the results. And now they're super like gung ho about it. They're like, go, like, go keep going post every day. Right. So, you know, and I still get people who tell me I post too much, but results. But, but in comparison to, to what, like they said, they were saying you're posting too much, like for an athlete, like to have a level of exclusivity or what, what was the reason? Or were they hating? No, I mean, keep it real, Jackson. Were they hating? No, it wasn't, it wasn't really a hating thing. Though. They were hating on a couple of the early videos because they sucked. They had a right to hate. Mm -hmm. Like the videos were trash. They were terrible videos. Like I look at them now and I'm like, oh, I was really bad. That's okay though. Like that's part of the learning process. You have, there's a huge learning curve to this content creation thing. And like. I'm still not very good at it relative to where I'm going to be a year from now. A year from now, we can have the same conversation and I'll say the exact same thing. So, you know, and now I'm trying to master like the SEO piece of it and like the hashtag strategies and like when to post and how to release. And like, there's a lot that goes into it, but I mean, no, they, they weren't, it definitely wasn't a hate thing. It was just athletes like to have a little bit of mystery. I don't. Because the way I see it, I'm so much more than just an athlete. So I don't want to be mysterious. I want people to know exactly what they're getting into when they talk to me. And, you know, and for me, I don't just post for people my age. I post for people who are a lot older than me because at the end of the day, those are the people with all the money. And it's like, I plan on starting a business one day. And, you know, I mean, I've already started my own business, which is me, right? Like Jay-Z said it best, like, I'm not a businessman, I'm a business man. So like, I'm the business. If I want people, grown private equity investors to invest in me, they need to see what they're gonna get before they ever even meet me. So I'm not gonna leave it up to chance. If I want that interview, they can Google me, type in Jackson Prince, everything that I am is there. And uh, that was actually a really cool moment for me too, because whenever I used to type in Jackson Prince on Google, it would just be Michael Jackson's son, Prince Jackson. So, and, and I used to get so, I used to get so mad and I'd just be like, man, like I just want me to pop up on Google once. And I'd always have to type in Jackson Prince basketball. You know, once I did that, then it was cool. But now it's like you type in Jackson Prince, there I am. It's great. Yeah. But no, man, I mean, that's why I do it is like, the brand that I'm building now as a 20 year old is going to be with me until I decide to stop doing it, which, you know, I'm 50, 60. So I got 30, 40 years of brand building in front of me. Like I'm nowhere close to where I'm going to be. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's why, that's why I do it, man. That's why I post so much. And so you, so you talk about the business side. So man, how how, do, how are you get how are you getting these deals, Jackson? I've I've, I've seen I've seen the deals, I've seen the content, uh, you know, I've, I've I've seen the products. Yeah, great question. Um, and I actually have a, a short that I'm going to be posting probably early next week. Really, there's there's five steps to it, right? One, you got to download social media. That's that's the first thing. You got to have a social media presence. Ninety percent of NIL deals are social media based. There, ninety percent of them are one-off posts where we pay you, we send you product, you make this video, we're done. That's ninety percent of NIL deals. Okay, cool. Knowing that, you have to have social media. the The second thing is you have to download and create profiles on these NIL marketplaces. So some of my favorite ones are like Mogul, um, Open Doors, Open Sponsorship. Those are the three where I've gotten the most traction. Influencer is a good one too. Um, you know, the, those are some of the ones that I've gotten some traction on. And just create a profile. Doesn't have to be perfect at first, but that's what you gotta do. The most important step though is you have to start making content. If people don't know who you are, if you don't have an audience, you're not gonna get paid, right? Like this last year, as a freshman red shirt walk-on, meaning first year in college basketball, not an athletic scholarship, and I've never checked into a collegiate basketball game, I still made five figures in NIL. Right? Like the, So I know this strategy works, and I'm giving it away for free, even though I've spent hundreds of hours perfecting it. Like, my girlfriend will tell you. Like, she gets driven up a freaking wall 
by how much I talk about it and how long I've spent working on this strategy. So third, you got to create content and you have to be completely authentic about the content you create. I have a friend who does mukbang videos, like just her eating crawfish while she's talking about her life as a college basketball player. Millions of views. Phenomenal. It's like, I wish I was that comfortable eating on camera, you know, it, but like, that's her, that's her thing. And, uh, you know, she gets a lot of deals from it and, you know, so you got to create content, right? Then I would say, once you have that audience, start reaching out to brands. What I did was through Instagram DMS and emails, 50 to a hundred different points of contact a week with a number of different brands. I listed out all of my favorite brands, all the ones that I would consider working with. And like, I just had a tree of like all the different brands I'd consider working with. And I hit up all of them multiple points of contact within the same organization for each brand. So I'd find like their director of mar director of marketing. I'd find a marketing employee. I'd DM the brand itself. And what happens is, you know, sometimes you'll get a deal from my first ever NIL deal was with a company called Chetty's. They sent me $750 and boxes stacked this high of their cheese crackers. And I made a video of it. They loved it. And, and, and that was cool, you know, 750 bucks, just like that. It took me less than a week from the point from when I texted them to the time the money hit my bank account, it was a week, you know? So, I mean, it, it was a pretty quick turnaround. And what happened with other deals was they would just send me product. They say, hey, we love your enthusiasm. Here's some product. I still make content around the product. I treat that as if I got paid to do it. Why? because I want to show the brand what I can do. I want to show them my appreciation and I want to give them reason to work with me and actually pay me in the future. Half of the times that I've done that, they've come back and paid me. Half of those times. So, you know, if I, if 10 brands send me product and I make 10 videos, I get paid for five of them. It's pretty good. And that's really good. So, and yes, I track all the metrics on this stuff. Like I know the numbers, um, which is another huge thing, but you know, and then, and then the last step is once you start creating content for these brands, take all that content and put it in an NIL media kit. Now what you do is when you cold outreach to these people, you send them the media kit and say, Hey, this is all the work that I've done. These are the numbers. Uh, you know, this is the engagement that I've gotten on this stuff and then send them two videos, brands that are similar you know, in a similar industry as that company say, Hey, this is about what I can do for you. And I'm open to suggestions, right? Send them all that stuff. My whole thing is give them, never give a company a reason to say no. So, I mean, if you, if you do all, if you do those five steps, download social media, uh, download social media, download the NIL marketplaces, start making content, uh, you know, create content for brands, and cold outreach to these brands and then create an NIL media kit and continue cold outreaching to these brands. <sighs> Man, you can, you can have a lot of success even as a Juco athlete. Jackson just gave y'all the game on NIL. <laughs> he just said five figures as a red shirt. Freshman, walk freshman on. walk on. And That's the game. You can do it in, in JUCO too. That's the game. I know, I know JUCO and division three athletes who made six figures this last year off of content. There's a, there's a junior college baseball player that has 512,000 Instagram followers and man, he kills it. I, for, I, I forget the guy. I'm blanking on the guy's name right now, but he is killing it. And like the more videos that you can have taken, like if you're a track athlete, you, like track athletes do the track and gymnastics outside of, you know, brand deals specifically. We're not talking about collective money because obviously football and basketball is going to get the most, most of the collective money. But brand deals, track gymnastics. Why? Because you can film your practices, practices and workouts without giving away the sauce. Like me, if I, if I had someone come and film our practice to give me content, well, then someone could watch that film and deduct our plays. You know what I'm saying? So like, but track, it's like, bro, if you run the 100, what are you doing every day? You're running the 100 and you can easily film like that. Boom. Put some text over the top of it. Put a trending sound. 
take off. It, it's easy. You just have to understand what your entry point in the game is. Once you figure it, and I haven't figured it out completely, but like, you know, I got to deal with Circle K that I'm posting in a couple days. And I've done KFC, Proactive, True Classic. They sent me this shirt, right? Like, the, these are the deals that people are looking to get. That's how you get them. Hope you're listening. If you're watching, I hope you're watching. He listed them off on his fingers. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. Okay, Jackson. Yeah, okay. man. That's, okay. that's a numbers, it's a numbers game. Now, granted, I've only worked with maybe, I'd say like 12 to 15 brands, but I sent 12, I mean, I sent 750 messages. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a numbers mm, thing. Like, wow. Like, it's a quantity over quality thing at first. So, I mean, you have to put in the work. You're not going to get 10, 15, 20 grand in a NIL if you don't do 10, if you don't do 50 grand worth of work you're not going to get 10 to 15 grand. So that's, mm. that's, what you're, that's what this audience is going to come to realize. And, and that's not even just for athletes. Like that's for people who just want to do content in general. Like it's the same blueprint. But yeah, man, it's, 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 it's an interesting space for sure. It's a lot of work that's got to be put into it. I mean, I work all day every day on this stuff. But man, I love it though. I love okay. it, man. There it is, man. Who, who, who are like, like, you know, top brands that you want to work with? That's like dream partnership. Yeah. So um, the Meta Ray-Ban collab mm. is, is my one. Like, I've, I've pitched this to them. I've pitched this, pitched this idea to four different people already in those two companies. Like, I've already pitched it to them. We're getting the meeting set up. Like, I'm going to close it soon. Um, I'd say Coca-Cola. Like the, the Coke deal would be phenomenal. I, you know, big fan of Coca-Cola. Um, man, I think H&M would be pretty sweet just cause, you know, I like to look good when I dress, but I just don't really put all that much effort into it, but I would love to have H&M. I think that would be pretty sweet. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you know, when I'm done playing, um, I think prize picks would be, would be, would be a good thing. Like when I'm officially done playing in, you know, NCAA basketball, I think prize picks would be cool just cause sports, sports betting is, I mean, the, the arguably the fastest growing industry in America right now. So yeah, I think prize picks would be cool or something like, or like FanDuel or something. Yeah. And then when I'm like older, older, like in my forties, I think like, I think crown Royal would fit the brand because Prince, you know, it just kind of like flows with the name. I can see that. Yeah. So like, but I mean, obviously that's like a much like older adult thing. Like I don't drink, but like, I just think having that deal associated with my last name being Prince, I just think that would be cool. I got you, man. Yeah. 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 I like that. I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so as we get ready to wrap this thing up, man, so there is a segment that we do here. It's called Winter Circle of the Week where I give you the opportunity to where you can highlight somebody you feel they've been grinding, they've been going after it, they've been getting it, but you feel that they haven't received the proper flowers or they're just due. Who would that person or persons be for you? Man, that person for me is Brittany Graham, for sure. I think um, the, the impact that she's had on my life, the impact that she's had on a lot of other people's lives, you know, she, she's in between situations right now, really trying to figure it out, but she is a dog. I mean, when, it, when you talk about having a person in your organization that, you know, that you want to be a winner, I can't think of, I can't think of very many people that I would say, like, besides Britt. So, yeah, definitely Brittany Graham. Okay. Shout out to her. Shout out to her. And then lastly, and we're going to get ready to get out of here. Lastly is uh, the Dear Student Athlete segment. And this is the opportunity to where you get the option, the opportunity to share with uh, the audience out there, like, what is one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Trust God. Trust God. He, he never fails. You know, you might get frustrated. Um, you might feel lost. You might feel like you're not where you're supposed to be. Uh, but trust God, everything happens in his time. And, you know, don't don't get caught up comparing yourself to others because we all got to run our own race. Everyone else is all, everyone else is already taken. The only person you can be is yourself. There it is, man. There it is. Awesome, man. Jackson, man, I appreciate you swinging by oh, beyond the ball, you. man. 
Yeah, please please let, let the audience know where they can find you, follow you, and connect with you. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, uh, you know, anywhere on social media, it's just Jackson Prince with no vowels. So J-C-K-S-N-P-R-N-C. Uh, you can find me, my YouTube, uh, where I post all my podcast stuff, at J Prince Official on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, man, appreciate you. All right, man, there it is. Ballers, man, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help student-athletes succeed beyond their degree. Until next time, man, peace. God bless. Beyond the Ball Podcast.